So there's two things in statistics that we use to help us create confidence intervals, this interval of 99%. The two big numbers are Z and T. And as the sample size get lar gets large, T gets closer to Z. Okay, they get closer to one another. Um, and usually in practice we use a T-score. But for this homework assignment, they're saying in the right that it's approximately normally distributed, so we're going to use Z. Okay, so that's just a disclaimer I have to put out there as a statistics teacher. We're using Z. Really, in practice, we wouldn't. We'd be using T. But okay, so there's a true mean, standard deviation. What interval? 99% of the samples fall, and they said they took 38 of the samples. So what we can do is we can construct a confidence interval, which is where you take a mean and you add and subtract the margin of error from it. And the margin of error is this computation. It's Z times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So this is the formula we want for this question. So the mean, in this case they gave us a true mean, so it's actually mu. It's 0 0.9223. And then we need a z-score, and the z-score has to represent 99% of the data. So when you find a z-score, we want a z-score so that 99% of the data is between the negative value and the positive value, that z-score. In other words, 99% is in the center, so that means you got 0.5% over here and 0.5% over here. So a z-score helps us figure out where 99% you know, of the data will land in the center with anything being outside that 99% being in the tails. Um, so the best way to do that would be with modern technology by using this website I have for you here. So you can pause the video if you want to type that in, or you can just type in uh, percentile. Okay, so I'll go to that website, statology.org, percentile of the z-score. And so for this one that I have, um, we want 99% of the area. And if we click Calculate, uh, so what that's actually... So if we want 99% of the area and click Calculate, you're going to get a z-score. But what z-score calculators and tables almost always do is they calculate the area to the left. So what I just got from my z-score calculator was 99% of the area to the left of the z-score. So it includes this tail. We want a z-score that cuts off right here. So all you have to do to make that correction is add this, uh, sorry, add this 0 0.05 to the end of it. 0 0.005, I should say, the 0.5%. So if you want a 99% confidence interval, then you want to type in 0.995 and click Calculate. So that's the z-score that we want. Um, if you wanted a 95% confidence interval, 95% confidence would mean that you got 2.5% in each tail. That way it all adds up to 100%, right? So the z-score you'd want to type in the, that calculator is 0 0.975. Add one of the tails to it. Um, I've got my z-score. I forgot what it is already, but I copied and pasted it to my clipboard. So that's what I'm going to plug in for z in that formula I've given up here. We plugged in the mean. We're going to plug in the z-score. Uh, we've got a standard deviation of 0 0.004. And then we're going to divide by the square root of the sample size, the square root of 38. And there we go. Once we make that calculation, uh, and then that will be the interval that they're looking for. So with my calculator, I'm going to do this square root of 38 first in my calculator. And I'll copy this to my clipboard. So I'm uh, holding control and pressing C. And we get 0 0.004 divided by that the square root of the sample size. And then I need to, that's, that's scientific notation. That's a really small number. That's 0.648 times 10 to the negative fourth power. So I'm going to multiply that result by 2.5758. And so there's our margin of error. So 0 0.9223 plus or minus this value. And that plus or minus symbol that I'm drawing, that means do it twice. Do it once for plus, and that's your lower end. Uh, sorry, uh, once for minus would be your lower end. And here, we don't need this many decimals. And then do it once for plus. So I'm making the calculation twice. And that will be our interval. And then we'll be done with the hardest part of this question. So 0.9223 minus 0 0.00167.
and then we've got 0.9223 plus 0 0.00167. And that is, um, what was I going to say? That's the answer to this first part. That's the interval in which 99% of the sample means fall. The next question here is, what is a sampling distribution? It's, an, it's approximately normally distributed. And the reason is that the sample mean is approximately normally distributed if the sample size is larger than 30. That's just a rough cutoff rule we use in statistics. Okay. Um, so what we do is we write this n with parentheses like function notation. We put the mean first. It keeps the same mean. But the standard, devi standard deviation of the sample mean is a little bit different. That's this part of your formula right here. Okay. So when we write the normal distribution, it keeps the same mean. I'm going to recalculate what that standard deviation of the mean was over here. I'm going to do that 38 again because I forgot it. If you wrote down the step though you'll have this number. And we got 0 .004 divided by the square root of the sample size. And so here's this scientific notation. What this actually means <clears throat> is it's 0 .6488856 times 10 to the negative fourth. In other words you've got to move that decimal four places to the left to shrink it. So if I move that decimal four places to the left here's one place. You need a placeholder there's two places three places, four places to the left. So there is our standard deviation of the mean. So that's part two. The sampling distribution it has a mean of 0 0.9223 and the sta uh, sampling distribution of the sample mean has a standard deviation of 0 0.00064888. We call that the uh, standard error sometimes, the standard deviation of the mean. And then what theorem is this? That's the central limit theorem. If you have an approximately, uh, if you have a large enough sample size, um, then you can consider the mean approximately normally distributed.